Hello fellows, welcome to my channel. This channel is entirely dedicated and created for educational purposes only. Here you can find high quality educational materials to learn the basics, whether you are a beginner, more advanced or an intermediate trader. For people that want to see more action, you can check the link on the top right corner. Here we are proving our methods with real accounts. We trade for several years and we show that it can be done profitably. You can subscribe as all profits go to our subs. You can find all the details about our accounts. However, since you are new in trading, using real money is almost forbidden. Practice will make you better and do not expect fancy cars and fake promises. Trading is real challenging and the numbers are against you. You won't need any money to start and everything is totally free. For most of our videos, you will find the link in the description that will lead you into a more advanced version of the video. But as beginners, I do not recommend. Stay with the basics and demo trading. So let's begin your journey. The story is much older than you think. Officially, during the 11th century, the French began regulating and trading agricultural debts on behalf of the banking community, creating the first brokerage system. The idea back then and today is still the same. Part of our human chaotic nature is to try to make predictions. Later on, in the Lloyd's coffee house, when they start betting if the ship will be coming back. An opposite relationship. Let's use one of the oldest trading commodities. While some people believe that the prices of corn would rise, others believe that the prices would go down. A guessing game on a chaotic board. With this example, you will be able to understand how brokerage firms start to evolve. Let's take two friends, John and Nicholas. They are friends for years and for sure they trust each other. All of a sudden, as they both read the newspaper, Nicholas says, oil prices will go up. Well, John replied the opposite. So they agree to bet. If the prices goes up, John will give Nicholas the difference and the opposite. The next day, they open the newspaper and the prices moved from 50 USD to 51 USD per barrel. Well, Nicholas won the bet. Now pay attention. They both don't own any oil. They are just speculating. But now they decided to make it a bit more interesting. For every dollar of movement, we will multiply by 10. Now the idea of leverage is born. A broker is an intermediate that executes orders on behalf of you in the markets. In our series, as we are trading currencies, we don't take ownership of the currencies. We are basically making a bet with our forex broker on whether the prices of a currency will rise or fall. Of course, the broker is not a friend. So in order to allow you to open a position, he will ask for a collateral, an amount of money to deposit in case the bet goes against you. Either you or the broker will have to pay the difference depending on who ends up wrong. From your side, there is no problem as you have already paid for the trade. But what happens with the broker? What will happen if the broker has no money to pay you back? This is known as counterparty credit credit risk. Can the other party pay? When you open a trade with your broker, you and the broker become counterparties of the trade. Legit forex brokers would prefer to stay in business rather than disappear with your funds. Your forex broker is a faceless corporate entity that requires you to send it money so you can open trades with it. Several questions arising. They are legit. Are you sure they are who they say they are? How do you know the company won't just take your money and disappear? Who are you really trading with? Is it a reputable broker? Pay attention to that. You don't trade something that you own. Brokers need to be serious with their liquidity and they must be able to guarantee your money. Now, since you got the idea, since your broker is taking the opposite sides of your trades, how does it avoid the risk? Are you sure your broker gives you the right prices? So if Forex broker is able to quote you any price it wants, how do you know that the prices you see on your screen are the actual prices? Who decides for these prices? How long does your broker need to execute a trade? Is there any differences? This is known as slippage. 
Slippage is the difference between the expected prices of a trade and the prices at which the trade is actually executed. We will go deeper in our analysis and we will discuss all these details in this episode. Choosing a forex broker will be one of the most important decisions you will make. Even though this is not important in your first steps, as you will trade with demo accounts, however, in the long term, finding a broker that suits you the best is really important. While you will do your own research, you will come across with a bunch of terms and acronyms for the types of brokers. Dealing desk, non-dealing desk, market makers, straight tool processing, electronic communication networks, direct market access, over-the-counter, liquidity providers. Forex broker comes to two types, dealing desk and non-dealing desk. In this channel, you will learn information that you will keep in your entire trading career, so take notes. Regardless of how retail Forex broker present themselves on their websites, there is only one type of Forex broker for retail traders. The most interesting part is that brokers are not even brokers. The word broker is not even used on their websites. The ones that use it are just to advance in search engine optimization for Google. So why is this? Because technically they are not brokers. There is no such thing as a retail forex broker. Now stay with me. Can you trust forex brokers? In order to trade forex, you will need an account with a provider of FX trading or CFT trading services. These are known as brokers. You deposit an amount of money and you're ready to trade. But are you sure you can trust your money? Well, you guess it correctly. Not all brokers are trustworthy. While you are in the demo stage, this won't be an issue as we said. However, in the long term, you will need to be sure when choosing a broker to deal with. A big issue is a lack of transparency and unclear regulatory structures. Also, I have dealt with unregulated brokers and their services were outstanding. The decentralized nature of the forex market is less regulated than other financial markets. With the rise of the internet, you can find tons of brokers out there across the world. In the past, many forex brokers were unregulated. There was no supervision of a governing body. So if you were scammed by an unregulated broker that operates in Barbados, then there is no hope. This is the reason the most important step is to verify your broker use brokers with good reputation. As a new trader, you need to do your own research. You must be sure that you will be able to withdraw your funds at any given time. Always check and verify when it comes to the point you will deposit your money. Imagine winning some consecutive trades and you choose to reward yourself. You realize that your broker doesn't give you back your own money. Make sure it's a real company. Is the Forex broker a real company? A nice website can be done in a couple of hours. So, as we said, verify, check the business name. Where does this company operate and where it is registered? Is it a known company? How long they are running their businesses? Here are things to look for verify that they are a real company. Check for any recent press releases or news. Does the company have a physical office address? Use Google Maps. Who runs the company? Is it a ghost company? What are the statements and principles of the company? Can you contact this company? Better make sure you can call them. Check their email address and customer support. As we said, you can call them, send an email with questions, contact their support team and start chatting if this is provided. Open a demo account to start your first contact. As we said in our series, do not rush to open a live account. Make sure they do business with a reputable bank. Shady brokers will use their customers' money for their own purposes. Even if the broker becomes bankrupt, it also ensures that customer funds are identified. In case of insolvent, your money would not be affected. Depending on the country, regulation states that segregated accounts can be used to pay creditors and customer funds must be returned to the customers. If a broker does not use segregated funds, do not deposit your money with them. A forex broker must be licensed, regulated and authorized to operate as a forex broker. This will protect you as a retail trader from any risk and potential fraud against you. Forex regulations differ from country to country. This means that not all regulatory agencies follow the same kind of regulations or offer the same type of financial protection. Regulation tries to protect you from brokers that try to act shady. 
there is not a single body for this huge market that operates 24-7 globally. Most countries have a regulatory authority that controls retail forex brokers. There are rules and these brokers must be registered and licensed with the corresponding regulatory body. They must be under regular audits and reviews to ensure that they can comply with the requirements. If a forex broker doesn't comply, the regulatory body has the power to issue fines and disciplinary actions. They might ultimately revoke that company's operating license. Each regulatory agency has its specific regulatory requirements and area of jurisdiction. For example, in US and Japan are considered to have the tightest regulatory agencies. In our example, there are also countries where trading effects is forbidden. The stricter the jurisdiction, the more protection that trader has. Most of the regulations force the broker to have a local physical office and a registered staff. A huge amount of money is guaranteed before even start operating. In addition, money that can assure that they will be able to pay their clients. Regular reports of liquidity to assure that their clients are not at risk. The cost to open and maintain a brokerage firm is huge. Now pay attention, a broker that is regulated, it doesn't automatically mean you can blindly trust it. In this map, we can see strict forex jurisdictions. For USA, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, the CFTC, the one that we are currently watching for our sentiment analysis and the NFA, National Futures Association. For Japan, Financial Services Agency. For UK, Financial Conduct Authority. For Canada, Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada. For EU, Cyprus Securities and Exchange Commission. And Malta, Financial Services Authority. For Singapore, Monetary Authority of Singapore. For Hong Kong, Securities and Future Commission. For Australia, Australian Securities and Investment Commission. For New Zealand, New Zealand Financial Markets Authority. Forex brokers regulated in strict jurisdictions are less prone to scams. Also, we have our exotic friends that without offense, they are more in the dark side. Remember what I said at the beginning of this episode. There are some shady brokers that are extremely good and helpful. Now, why is that? Well, it's very simple. The amount of leverage they can provide is enormous. So keep that in mind when you are trading. If you want to over leverage a very small amount with a huge returns, then you might play it risky. Again, we always recommend high reputable and trustworthy brokers. But as traders, you need to know the dark path of this force. And now here is our dark list. Belize, International Financial Services Commission. The British Virgin Islands, Financial Services Commission. Cayman Islands, Cayman Islands Monetary Authority. Cook Islands, Marshall Islands. For Kenya, Capital Markets Authority. Mauritius Financial Services Commission. For South Africa, Financial Sector Contact Authority. Saint Kitts and Nevis. Seychelles, Seychelles Financial Services Authority. For St. Vincent and Grenadines, Financial Service Authority. Vanuatu, Vanuatu Financial Services Commission. One of my favorite. These are exotic destinations known as offshore jurisdictions. These islands are low or no tax countries with corporate laws that maximize financial privacy and minimize regulatory interference. Brokers like to go offshore. Why is that? Well, not so many regulations. It's faster. It's cheaper. You need the minimum capital requirements, minimal taxation, and there is no need for any physical office or registered staff. There are forex brokers that operate without a license. Well, imagine you can start a brokerage unlicensed firm with 1,000 USD. Well, I'm not so sure that you would trust it. These unlicensed are totally unregulated. There is zero customer support and you are at your own risk. They indeed might give better spreads, better commissions, some extra deposit bonuses. But again, they know that 95% are losing money in the market. So they know what they are doing. This is the reason they can give a ridiculously high leverage. Here, the path is far more 
than dark. If something goes wrong, you won't be able to withdraw your money. Always choose and prefer a regulated broker. The chances of losing your money from trading remain the same. However, you might need to choose a broker for some long-term investments. You can always report a regulated broker to the corresponding regulator agency. Minimize your risk while choosing a regulated broker is a must. Now, is there a way to identify a broker's regulatory status? Well, yes, there is. Every broker who is licensed and authorized receives a unique ID number. This regulatory information must be displayed on their website, so you should be able to easily spot their ID number. Now, pay attention to scams. Fake ID numbers, fake sites, locations, everything is possible. This is why it's important to make sure and verify this ID number on the official regulatory agency's website. Here is an example on how you can do it. I will use one of the most reputable brokers as an example. A regulatory agency website should provide information about broker, its owners, companies, executives and so on. I will proceed to the example as we said. On the bottom we check the number. Now I will use this site and we see if they are who they say they are. If the broker is listed, make sure to verify the contact details listed. If the broker is listed, make sure to verify the contact details listed are what's listed on the company's website. There are scam brokers who pretend to be the listed company. Contact the broker directly, as we said earlier. Trade with broker that has a physical office in your country. Choose a broker that physically operates in your country. If the regulatory agency, the broker and you are all in the same jurisdiction, you will be better protected. There are forex brokers attempting to benefit from differences in regulation between jurisdictions. Brokers are not your friends. They are necessary evil in this trading story. They want to maximize their profits. For example, a forex broker operating in a strict jurisdiction may establish a separate company, a subsidiary company, under the same brand in an offshore jurisdiction and redirect the account. So even though you open an account with a strict regulated company, you will be transferred in a subsidiary company that operates in Vanuatu. So let's say you want to open an account, check the information you saw in our video. Do a small test drive. Open a small account, do some small trades and then request a withdrawal of your entire balance. Now there might be some fees but in any case this will make you feel sure about it. If you are pleased from their services and they'll fulfill their obligations then you can proceed. As traders, we are trading thin air. If you are not aiming to the long-term investments that we have analyzed in another episode of this series, then you are a speculator. You don't physically own any of the currencies you are trading. When you buy the USD versus GPY, you speculate that the USD will become stronger versus the GPY. At this moment, you make a speculation, a bet. You might think you are buying and selling actual currencies, but you are not. You are not buying or selling anything tangible, you are simply speculating on currency rates. The first question that pops up in your mind is where do these exchange rates come from? These exchange rates come from the FX spot market. In the spot FX market we see trades between institutional traders known as FX dealers. In the spot FX market we are trading contracts, FX spot contract. We are not trading the underlying currency themselves, but a contract involving the relative pair. In the spot FX market, an FX dealer buys or sells a contract to physically exchange one currency for another. This means that a spot trade creates the obligation to buy or sell a certain amount of foreign currency at an agreed upon price or exchange rate. And here comes the FX rate. For the example of the USD GPY pair, you buy a contract at a specific price. The physical exchange of the currency pair takes place right at the point of trade or on the spot. We have mentioned that detail several episodes ago that the actual transaction takes about two days to complete. The spot rate or spot price is the current market price of a currency pair. The market is huge and decentralized. So imagine there are several entities offering 
and several entities willing to buy a worldwide market. Since you want to buy, you will look for the best price available in the market. In the FX market, you cannot physically check all the available offers. What you see is the spot price, theoretically the best offered price. FX dealers may quote different spot rates to different market participants. The spot price is found by asking a bunch of different FX dealers at the same time. The spot rate is really a matter of how many people you ask. A spot trade involves physically settlement, meaning if you bought USDJPY, you have to fulfill the contract and physically deliver US dollars and accept delivering of JPY at the given rate. The concept of spot FX trading is similar to that of futures trading. The traders are making an agreement to take or deliver at a specific time in the future. The time frames are much different as in a spot FX is delivered within a few days. Futures are delivered several months later. As traders, we care only for the rates of a currency pair as we are making bets. So our bets are based on the spot effects market. You are trading thin air, just some numbers. In our example of the two friends, they didn't actually own any oil. They start betting on the price of the oil. This is the same principle. The contract is known as CFD, contract for difference, because that is what we are doing. This is done through the use of a financial instrument known as financial derivative contract. However, we won't go any deeper for this analysis. A contract for difference. As CFD, as we said before, is like a mirror an agreement between a buyer and a seller to exchange the difference between the current price of an underlying asset. We speculate on the possible up or down direction of the market. Remember the example with two friends. For every one USD of the oil, your CFD would do the same. However, none of the friends own any oil at any given time. Like a mirror of the actual oil prices, these two friends were taking bets. For the Forex CFDs, the principle is the same. We bet on a currency versus another. CFD trading is allowed by the CFD providers. When you open a position with a CFD provider, it creates or issues a CFD between itself and you. You both agree on a given price. Goes without saying that the result would be adverse or favorable. Pay or getting paid. You can speculate on a price movement in any direction, long or short. As we discussed in previous episode, the decision you will take will be either to go long or short in the market. There are two options. Either you believe the market will go higher, in the example of the USDJPY, that the USD will be worth more than the given price of the GPY in the future, or short if you believe that the USD will lose value versus the GPY. When the contract trade closes, you will call either to pay or get paid the difference between the closing price and the opening price of the CFD position. Again, there is no physical exchange of currencies. In the US, CFDs are banned, so US retail traders trade a product known as rolling spot FX contracts. They are considered different from CFD, but practically they are the same. Both are cash settled contracts in a particular currency pair that gives you exposed to change in the price for that currency pair. Again, when the contract closes, you will pay or get paid. The game has no meaning because the changes might be very small. Remember the two friends. Taking bets on the actual oil prices didn't prove to be so profitable. But then, the two friends leverage multiplied by 10. For every USD, they choose to bet 10. Now we have leveraged derivatives. Now with leverage involved, a small percentage change will have a huge impact as the trader is leveraged. With a couple of hundred dollars, you can now buy hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now the game became much riskier. A small change would have a huge impact on your account balance. We know that the retail traders do not trade real effects. So when you buy or sell, where do your trades go? The Forex market is a huge market with thousands of users, from national banks to companies to simple tourists who just exchange their currency to cover their needs while traveling to another country. They all use the money to do their business. National banks and huge players 
are doing business by exchanging currencies between them. Countries do the same in several ways, either by exchanging upon an agreed price or by using common exchange accounts to trade, let's say, commodities like oil or corn. In our example, we are interested in exchange rates. In order to see and identify where do these prices come from, we need to check the market, starting from the bottom. There are some huge players that trade directly between them in different prices. However, not everyone has the same access. We all buy currencies at different prices. The place we exchange real currency is the market. Now, each market is different with different rules. The market is huge and chaotic. Imagine buyers and sellers at huge amounts. We finally agree on a price. Of course, this will be ultimately formed based on supply and demand rules. There are different quoted prices in any given market. The differences might be fractions of a cent or they might be bigger. FX trading occurs in many different places at once. A network of prices. Now each market has a different size and volume. Again, not everyone has the same access to these markets. Huge players, the dealers, trade with each other in large quantities. This is the inter-dealer market or the interbank market. Banks can proceed with transaction. These huge banks are called in a slang term, bulge bracket banks. The market is anonymous. Nowadays, there are prime brokers that can also provide deals to smaller players. Prime brokers make it possible for these smaller market participants, despite their limited credit history or higher risk profile, to use the prime broker's high credit rating and trade almost anywhere and with anyone in the market. The forex market is connected, however, not everyone has to pay the same rates. So when you see the term inter-dealer market or interbank market, it refers to a network where currency transactions are negotiated between financial institutions and other large players. These rates create their reference rates by other market participants. Finally, this average agreed price is displayed to you by your retail forex broker, usually with a spread that we have already analyzed in previous episodes. The prices on your screen are provided by your broker, a small player that tries to exist in a vast market. Now, brokers are different in size. Prices are different. Spreads and quoted prices are also different. For your part, as a simple retail trader, this is the last thing you need to worry about. The rules is that most liquid pairs, like the Euro USD, will have less spread. This broker needs to connect with prime brokers. A prime broker is an entity that is willing to represent the retail forex broker in all its trading transactions that occur. For the larger retail forex brokers, they are able to enter into a prime broker relationship. In order to have an intermediate and a smaller in size, we have another type. This type is known as the prime of prime, POP. This is a firm that has an account with a prime broker that offers its services to other market participants, such as forex brokers. POPs bridge the gap between the institutionals and the retail FX markets by enabling retail forex brokers to leverage the POP's credit relationships with the prime brokers. The POP allows the smaller retail broker to trade through it. In this vast market, you as a trader are completely cut off. You blindly follow your broker and the quoted prices. When you are trading, you trade only with your broker. When you execute a trade, the broker is the one who takes it. So in the question, if we are living in a simulation, we do. This information can be found in any agreement with all the brokers. The broker provides you with a completely simulated environment for you to trade. A simulation inside the simulation. The prices would be similar with the real market. You will lose or you will make money based on the real market. The one who you trade with is your broker and he is willing to take the opposite positions. He buys when you sell and he sells when you buy. You are in a parallel market. Your trade doesn't go out to the market. 
even though you are trading with a friend in the same broker and you take opposite positions you are still trading with the broker in the institutional market retail forex broker are referred to as retail aggregators they aggregate the net positions of their customers for hedging purposes they then transact in the institutional fx market to manage their exposure to market risk for you as a retail trader when you open a position you come into an agreement with your broker on an agreed price on the quoted prices he showed to you. Now, don't worry about that. The simulation is really good. You can make and lose money, real money. These contracts are called CFDs or Rolling Spot FX contracts. I hope you are still with me. Since the broker takes the opposite position from you, who guarantees that they are not cheating? You know, just a bit, a couple of fractions of cents in each transaction. There is a conflict of interest. When you make money, your broker loses money. So there must be a risk for them also, right? Well, yes, you guess it correctly. There is a counterparty risk. The broker might not be able to fulfill the obligations. There are some extreme examples that we won't mention in this episode. Now, as I trade, as a retail trader, I am coming into an agreement with a counterparty, my broker. The agreement implies that we both have obligations as we agreed with a contract. The broker is obligated to fulfill the contract and do what we agree. A counterparty is simply the other side of a trade. For example, a buyer is a counterparty to a seller, a principal to principal trading. And we come to our earlier argument. A forex broker is not really a forex broker but it's a forex dealer. A broker is an agent that acts on your behalf between you and another counterparty. However, as we explained, a forex broker cannot be a true broker because it is your counterparty. He takes the other side of the transaction as a principal. He is not a broker, but he is the dealer. So here is the risky part. Can the broker support your trades, also known as default risk or counterparty credit risk? is the risk that a counterparty will not pay as obligated on a contract. So let's give an example. You open a huge position with your broker and then close it for a profit. What happens if the broker doesn't have the money to pay you? Multiply that with thousands of traders. What will happen if they open a similar position? Now, of course, you just arrived in the party. You hit a small account with 1000, let's say, and you just open a long position. But what if someone takes the same side with you but with a huge position size. Are you in danger? Can the broker pays you? Can the broker covers you? Can the broker cover your position? You deposited an amount of money and you think you are safe. But in reality, if all of the broker's money is gone, then the money owed to this winning trader may come from your money. That's why we said Forex brokers are not brokers. They are dealers. FX market is an over-the-counter market an otc market there is no third party available to step in and make sure you receive the money if your broker goes out of business or can't honor your winning trade your money is gone now you understand why it's important to know and verify your broker now don't worry legit licensed and reputable brokers knows how to handle risk and that's why we are here First, we need to understand how Forex brokers make money. People that are new in trading do not know how an order is processed or how brokers or CFT providers operate. It is important before going into any risks to know some details, even though this is the most boring process and you will be able to find the information later on. It is essential, however, to explain the basics. The trading process is not transparent. As we said, when you place an order and the order is executed, it actually goes nowhere. Dealer is on the opposite side. Retail brokers do not trade on behalf of their customers. They are the dealers. They take the opposite side of you. Remember what we said about how Forex brokers are not actually brokers. For example, a regulated broker in the US is formally referred to as a retail foreign exchange dealer. Now, why they choose to use the term broker? Well, I guess it's easier for retailers to understand them. To simplify the terms between a client and a customer, you are clearly not a client as the Forex broker doesn't act in your best interest. You are a customer that can speculate, make bets 
on the price movements of the currency pairs. We said earlier that you cannot trade directly in the FX market, so he does it for you. A broker doesn't check to find you a client for the other side of your bet, another speculator with a different opinion than you. So when you want to buy, someone has to sell and the opposite. Your broker is betting against you. So your actual trade doesn't never reach the real market. But don't worry, your simulation worked perfectly. In the real world, it would be a broker if he was able to find you another person who wanted to buy what you are selling and the opposite. But it doesn't do this. So keep in mind, every time you are winning a trade, your broker loses. But let's work a bit more on this one. When I decide to buy, my broker sells. When another person sells, the broker buy. Now makes more sense. The broker bought X amount from me and sell X amount to another person. So practically, the broker exposure is zero. It was really simple. Well, it's not. The broker needs to make money and mitigate the risk. The prices are different and the spread is involved. We have already described in previous episodes. The broker manages to offset the positions between the customers. The more trades you take, however, the better for your broker. Spread is his friend. Let's expand this example to the Forex broker and customers. Imagine that they are thousands. Well, at least this is what they are hoping. The more client the broker has, the better. But what will happen if customers start to open massive positions? of the same size and the same side, the broker will lose. Like your local stall, will you be out of stock? The broker must be able to manage and mitigate that risk properly. He must be able to fulfill its obligations and pay your profits. But how do they do it? The first and the obvious way is to have a huge amount of capital. They can also transfer the risk to another market participant. They can offset opposing trades from customers. The last, of course, is not possible since most of the customers choose the same side. So, how does a Forex broker can handle the risk? Now, let's dive a bit deeper. We have several broker categories based on how they manage their risk. To mitigate the risk, the broker must make a decision. Either he will accept the risk or transfer it to another participant. The first major category is when the broker accepts the risk. It is called B-Book Execution. The B-Book model is a model where the broker itself acts as a forex market maker, processing orders in-house. In this case, your trade is B-Booked. At this point, the broker has taken the risk, internalized, and stored it or warehoused it. I hope you can spot the conflict at this point. There is a huge conflict of interest. Since your broker makes money when you are losing, Actually, they don't want their customers to win. This is a huge chapter, but let's continue by explaining the risk and the type of brokers. The next category is the A-Book Brokers. If the broker doesn't want to accept the risk, it can find the third party and transfer the risk to them. This is also known as offloading or hedging risk. The broker searches for other market participants to mitigate the risk. This might be a bank, a non-bank electronic market maker, a hedge fund, or even another forex broker. A broker cannot just close the store and leave the customers, as we explained earlier. It wants to make sure that it can hedge whenever a new trade arrives. And it needs a market participant who will keep providing quotes that are tradable at any time. These market participants are also known as liquidity providers, STP broker, ECN broker or non-dealing desk brokers. In this example, when a broker takes the opposite trade and transfers the market risk, is known as A book execution. When your broker receives an order from you, the customer, the broker, will enter into a separate trade with a liquidity provider in the same direction as you. The broker is now covered and hedged. The broker positions against the liquidity provider is known as a cover position or hedge. But remember what we said, they must make money. But how do they do it? How a book brokers make money? You need to understand this concept. Understanding how a broker generates revenue helps you understand how they think. What are their intentions? In all cases, the primary target is to make money. The concept is similar here also. When you buy, your broker sell to you. The broker immediately takes the same side of your trade by buying from a liquidity provider, as we explained. So practically, your broker takes no risk on the trade. 
there are two primary ways of an A book broker to make money. Markup on spread and commissions. Commissions are charged according to the size of your trade. It can be charged per lot, per million USD or as a percentage of the trading volume. Let's say a standard fee per lot. Of course, commissions vary from broker to broker and also depend on the volume size you are trading. The other way an able broker can make money is by marking up the spread. The broker adds an extra amount to the pricing of its customers. So actually your broker buys cheaper from the liquidity providers. Think it like your local market. The owner buys from a bigger market and can take advantage of the different size in orders. The broker makes money because the price it trades with its liquidity providers are better than the price it trades with you as a customer. This won't appear in your screen. Of course, you will get the final trade with a bigger spread. For us, the retail traders, due to the low trading volume, the spread should be the less of our worries, at least when you start trading. In the long term, makes a huge difference and we will analyze it in another episode. Let's take an example and use the most popular pair, the Euro USD. A raw spread, which usually liquidity providers trade, is maybe less than 0.1 pip. Adding up the markup, your broker finally will be able to provide you a 0.4 pips. Now, if you check the average broke offers are at around 1 pip. So the final profit for your broker is 0.6 now you understand how hard it is for an able broker to make profits in the market, but mitigating the risk is also important. We can see clearly the difference of an able broker and a big broker. The able broker are more customer oriented as they want to have profitable traders. This will increase either their trading size or volume, which means more revenue for the broker. You can understand now the major difference. While a big broker makes money while the customer is losing, the able broker is on the opposite side as they have the same interest. The A book execution model comes with its unique challenges. The model sounds perfect with no risk, the same interest as you and so on. In reality, there are huge challenges. As we said, an able broker earns profits from markups. He buys cheaper from the liquidity provider and puts a markup in the spread. Now, what will happen if the quoted price from your broker to execute the trade is better than the price from the liquidity provider? Is this even possible? You understand the speed of transactions in the unit of time. We are talking about millions of transactions in fractions of a second. The broker must be fast enough so he won't lose from the changes in prices. Now, to avoid these time differences, the broker displays directly the quoted prices from the liquidity provider. The broker will only display quoted prices to customer when the markup is profitable. Also, the broker does that by entering the trade with a liquidity provider at the same time as with its customer covers his risk. Now, understand that if there is a delay in execution, the broker will end up losing. The slippage is there for your broker as the prices change at a ridiculous speed. Price slippage is the risk for an able broker execution. Remember what we said about brokers that are actually dealers. The same occurs with the STP execution. Straight through processing is just a fancy word. Able brokers are sometimes also marketed as STP brokers. We have already analyzed the STP brokers. While they are both similar as they transfer market risk, they are two different ways to execute an order. The term was originally introduced when electronic trading became available. It makes paperwork obsolete and maximizes efficiency while eliminating human error. The entire process is done electronically. Nowadays, the term is used for marketing purposes. The term refers that your order goes directly to the market without any interference. Of course, this is not true as your trades never reaches the market as we explain. It's good to know and in this series you will learn a lot of information that most likely you won't find very easy. There is an important difference between an A book and STP execution. With an A book broker you will experience faster execution and minimum slippage because this broker will execute your trade first and then hedge. This is called post trading hedging. The STP broker will make sure that he will be able to match your order with a liquidity provider and then execute the trade, known as pre-trading hedging. When your broker executes an offsetting position with a counterparty prior to executing your order, this is known as straight-through processing. Why would a broker 
STP orders instead of A booking. The benefits of straight through processing for a broker is that it eliminates slippage between its customers' order fields and hedged trade. STP allows the broker to ensure that it's able to secure this price before it confirms its order with you. But while the slippage for the broker is eliminated, the possibility for slippage for you has increased. Execution speed is slower because before the broker can confirm your trade, it first must receive confirmation from its liquidity providers regarding its trade. During this process, it's possible that the price may have moved and the price confirmed between the broker and the liquidity provider may have changed. When an STP broker accepts a customer's order, a trade is executed via STP. This type of transaction is known as a riskless principle or matched principle transaction. Remember what we said about your broker, when you buy, he sells. With STP execution, a riskless principle transaction is possible. When you place an order with an STP broker, it immediately attempts to place an identical order with an external liquidity provider, exactly as we described earlier. The broker acts riskless. First buys from the liquidity provider, records the transaction, and then fills the order with you. Now, once you execute your order, and the broker manages to match your order with a liquidity provider, we have matched principle. Now your broker acts as a real broker as he tries to match your order with another party, the liquidity provider. Even if your broker again takes the opposite direction in the market, he also acts as a riskless principle by offsetting trades. Your trade with a liquidity provider. In this case, we are dealing with a true broker as he facilitates the process. Your broker makes money by adding a markup to the price provided by the liquidity provider. It's a more healthier relationship as now the broker makes money based on the transaction volume and not when you are losing. Brokers who operate this way are designated as a riskless principal or matched principal brokers. You can verify if your broker is one by looking at its registration listing on its regulatory agency website. With a book, the broker manages the risk of each trade individually. Now we said that the broker offset positions with a liquidity provider. A very simple question arises. What if you open a long position on the Euro USD, let's say, and another trader does the opposite, a position of the same size? Why offset with a third party? Why not simply to choose to switch trades with these two fellow traders? In the bottom line, you are a broker. Well, that's what they do. Through internalization, they can add up all customers let's say, that are long in EURUSD and match them with traders in the opposite direction. Now the broker saves money as he does the process internally. The larger their customer base, the better in handling trades internally. The more trades he handles internally, the less fees he will pay in the liquidity providers. Let's say that all trades that are long in fiber are 20 million USD and the short positions are 15 million USD. The broker must make a decision about the remaining 5 million USD. The difference is also called residual and by definition residual risk. For the remaining 5 million USD, he must accept the risk or transfer it as we explained earlier in a liquidity provider. Practically, the broker in an ideal scenario will offset all shorts with long positions. However, this is impossible. He must be willing to handle the risk of the remaining positions. Broker first need to offset positions with customers and for the remaining risk, they hedge externally with a liquidity provider based on a volume weighted average price. The broker won't hedge with each trader separately, but instead he will use average prices. In this table, we have pros and cons depending on its execution method and the outcome of a trade. Now that you have an idea of how brokers actually work, let's see a bit more. The B broker will act as a dealer by handling your trade internally. He will go to the opposite direction of you. For every USD you lose, it goes to the broker's pocket. Now why do Forex B bull brokers expose themselves to risk and go against you? Well, the answer is very simple. 90% of traders lose money in the market. These are the numbers. In the long term, most traders quit. The statistics show that less than 1% of the traders remain after two years. The broker knows that a retail trader won't last for too long. That's why we are here and that's why we created this series. 
As we explained earlier, a BIBU broker will make money while you lose. Keep in mind this fundamental rule. When you lose, the broker profits. Retail traders act like gamblers. Fast money, a get rich fast scheme, a pattern that is being repeated for centuries. They try their luck, they double their position after a losing one and several fatal mistakes. The deadly 90-90-90 rule is here. 90% of traders lose 90% of their account in 90 days, in less than 90 trades. As a broker, you just need to sit back and relax, watching your stallions compete in a rat race. You do a couple of trades, you've just been lucky, you overtrade with a huge position, and that's it. End of story. But since big book are going against you, it means that they must also have a risk to handle. Well, this type of broker wants traders who trade very often while opening equally long and short positions. They can profit from their spread. Now, you cannot blame brokers cause you suck in trading. They are doing their job and this is up to you to leave that rat race. B brokers prefer small players that over trade. They want their customers to trade too much but not winning so much. Another trading mistake is choosing very small time frames without mentioning that there are brokers that provide even less than 10 seconds time frames. Especially new traders will switch from long to short positions in a matter of hours and even minutes as they have no experience of the market. Bibu brokers don't like customers who win consistently. These customers will grow their account balance over time, allowing them to open bigger and bigger position sizes while trading against them. Brokers usually use a model called the hybrid model, switching between A book and B book. Probably you already understand what the hybrid model is, but let's sum a bit at this point. A broker fills your order based on the type. An A book is hedging before, a B book is not hedging at all, by internalized and chooses, and lastly, by hedging first, straight through processing. But what if a broker chooses both? And here it comes the hybrid model. A forex broker is not limited to just one form of hedging. A broker can generate independent price streams and hedging models for social traders, new traders, API traders, or screen traders. Most brokers operate A and B book, selecting which trades are internalized and which will be hedged with a liquidity provider. This is known as the hybrid model. This gives diversity to the broker. He can offset with customers, hedge orders with a liquidity provider, or accept full market risk. So the broker will mitigate the risk by giving some customers positions to liquidity providers while he can keep others in-house. The broker must decide their rules and separate customers' orders by using an order routing system or order execution engine whose purpose is to manage orders by sending them to A book or B book automatically. Goes without saying that the broker will keep trades that are losing and hedge against the traders that are profitable. Successful traders will be A book and for the traders who suck will be B book. In order to determine profitable traders, brokers have software that analyze how customers trade. With the use of algorithms, brokers are able to analyze trading patterns to profile the trades of each customer. The bigger the customer base, the better for the broker. He is able to offset positions between customers and maximize profits. For the BIBU brokers, they take the opposite side of you in trade until a certain limit. The use of B book combined with only externally hedging beyond a certain risk limit provides better order execution because it allows the broker to immediately execute your trade while keeping latency and its cost to a minimum because it doesn't have to A book or STP every trade, which would mean paying the liquidity provider spread. Most Forex brokers use a hybrid approach. Trades from new retail traders will most likely be be booked since most new traders lose. It's very rare for a retail broker to be 100% able. The A-book model has a much lower margin because he has to pay also fees to liquidity providers. With so many unprofitable trades, a B-book model provides an additional source of revenue. Keep in mind that important information. The type of broker won't make a difference if you suck in trading. Other than A book and B book, you will also see the C book brokers. C book broker is just a classification to better describe and sell to retailers to us. The difference of how a broker manages the risk remains the same. The C book broker will partially hedge, over hedge, 
or use reverse hedging. Now let's see one and each of these. So what is the partial hedge? This means that you won't take the entire risk for your position. You will choose to share the risk with a liquidity provider. That's why we say that is partially hedged. The risk for the broker is still there. The broker might choose to over hedge. The broker might also choose to over hedge. Not only he will cover your position, but he will also trade with you. So let's say you open a 10 lots. The broker not only will cover your 10 lots, but by using the liquidity provider, he will also choose to add some extra lots if he believes that the trade will go into his favor. This gives the flexibility to the broker to increase profits. But there is a catch. Reverse hedge. Another type of C-booking is when a broker reverse hedges a customer's trade, either partially or completely. Now, since new traders lose money, the broker not only will take the entire risk of the position, but he will also add. Well, yes, guys, this is how brokers think. Not only he doesn't trust for the risk but he also adds to it this of course means the risk will be increased for the broker remember the double effect we describe in the market bigger potential gains equals bigger potential losses the broker hedges to avoid market risk the broker acts like a customer when it comes to face liquidity providers in the same way you need to deposit an amount of money so you can cover potential losses. Brokers do the same. Like we use margin, they do exactly the same. They need to deposit collateral to make business. This is called posting margin. This is important to know because posting margin means the broker has to put up cash margin with the liquidity providers that they trade with. The broker like you must be sure that the liquidity provider will be there. In the same way, you expect your broker to cover your positions. For smaller brokers, they may not be able to choose their liquidity provider as they rely on services of a POP to hedge their trades and are limited to the liquidity providers that the POP grants the broker access to. Unless stated by your broker, it's important to know that a broker's hedging practice may not totally eliminate risk to its customers. You can ask your broker for a copy of its hedging policy. It's important to know how your broker manages the risk and what counterparties he chooses to transfer the risk to. If the broker doesn't want to disclose this detail, it is time to change broker. A broker needs to be able to provide transparency, especially what are their liquidity providers. When you trade, you see some prices on your screen. But where do these prices come from? Are they actual prices? Since you are trading a simulation, how do you know that the prices are accurate? How do you know the prices that you see on your platform are an accurate reflection of what's happening in the real Forex market? What prevents your broker from displaying any prices he wishes to? Can the broker make a spike and eliminate your trade? But wait a minute, is it possible for different platforms from different brokers to show different prices? Theoretically, a broker is showing you what are buying so actually he can do it's up to you to choose whether you'll trade at those prices how and where a forex broker sources its prices it's totally up to its discretion this means that prices offered by a forex broker may or may not reflect prices available elsewhere such as from another forex broker theoretically the prices should be quoted the same right and there lies the problem unfortunately in the forex market there is no such a thing as one price it's an OTC market, an over-the-counter market. We as participants, when we are trading stocks, for example, there is a CIP, Securities Information Processor, which distributes the data. For example, when the NISA executes a trade to buy shares, it reports the trade to the CIP. The CIP combines all quotes to determine National Best Bid and Offer, NPBO. The average time to gather and consolidate the data occurs in less than a millionth of a second in just a couple of microseconds. In 2005, the Securities and Exchange Commission passed the regulation National Market System, known as Reg NMS, Regulation National Market System. The NBBO allows everyone to know the best bid and offer for every exchange listed stock. This provides fair and equal pricing for all traders, both large and small. All traders are protected by the prices 
that exchange shows because every trade must occur at prices no worse than the NBBO at the time the trade was executed. Unfortunately, this is not the same when we are trading FX. This means that the Forex market has not the equivalent of an NBBO for each currency pair. Reputable brokers will quote their prices based on other FX participants like bank and other non-bank financial institutions. The market you already know with the liquidity providers. A group of liquidity providers is known as a liquidity pool. These prices will be used as a reference. The broker will do his game by using the spread, the difference between the bid and ask prices. These quotes arriving are known as a price stream. The price that you see is based on prices that your broker obtains from these liquidity providers. The broker has a pool of multiple liquidity providers from which it receives pricing for various currency pairs it offers. The broker finds the best price and shows them to you, of course with a markup. A very important detail, just because two traders use the same broker, it doesn't automatically mean they both see the same bid and ask price in their price stream. It depends on how brokers profile you as a customer and this is known as price discrimination. Ask your broker, Forex brokers that are big enough have access to several liquidity providers. Most of the global FX liquidity is provided by large banks which dedicated FX department which are referred to as tier 1 liquidity providers. This includes Bank of America, Barclays, JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, BNB Baribas, Goldman Sachs, Credit Suisse and so on. The broker engine matches the best bid and ask price and comes to you, of course, with a markup. Having multiple liquidity providers is important, especially during some extreme market conditions with high volatility. Smaller brokers choose to use electronic market makers to proceed. Examples of electronic market makers in the FX markets are Citable Securities, Virtual Financial, XTX Markets and so on. POP providers have prime broker relationships with major banks which give them the ability to collect prices from multiple liquidity providers and distribute them to smaller forex brokers. If you see bank logos on your broker, don't believe the hype. Due to their small size, most retail forex brokers don't have direct relationships with this tier 1 liquidity provider. Only the larger forex broker with PB relations can claim this. The rest rely on a POP and it is the POP, not the broker, who should display the bank logos. But let's come to the first part and the beginning of this chapter. Can there be any price manipulation? Some forex broker may even require their customers to acknowledge that the reference prices used to determine the value of the underlying asset, for example currency pairs, may differ from the price available in the market. This is something that you will meet very, very, very often. The accuracy of prices might be questionable. You can open the trading platform of your broker, however you need to open it from the view of another customer to verify this information. Same customers quote it differently differently as we said. This makes the market manipulation possible. Traders have complained that forex broker alter prices at their own discretion to either cancel a winning trade to avoid payout of course or close traders to realize customer losses, a spike that will cause you to lose the trade. Volatile market conditions provide the perfect opportunities for price manipulation and stop hunting where a broker chooses a trader's position to make a profit for himself. This is important to know to avoid the trading at these times of high volatility. However, keep in mind that in high volatility market, opportunities arise. I know this is a headache, but that's why trading can become very confusing and will take time to master. When you place a stop loss or take profit, the broker knows exactly your limits. And now combine the information we said with a B-booking. Now the broker is against you. He knows you will take the wrong decision. Some shady brokers continue this kind of practices. Where there are minimum regulation, this is what you should expect. Slippage is another big chapter. As we have explained in previous episodes, you actually execute your order at another price than the one quoted. An asymmetric slippage into the order execution where prices benefit the broker. Is there any way to avoid this pricing game? We have several examples of traders complaining for brokers to have an unclear and confusing pricing methodology. Remember the FX market is an OTC market. There is no single price. Prices may not be exactly the same, but they should only deviate by a tiny bit. Of course, this depends on the pair. Retail Forex 
and CFD trading platform should be able to clearly explain how it determines their prices. Of course, as a retail trader, you are not a police officer. Your focus should be on your trading style and not these details. However, it is important to know the risk and the danger before choosing any broker to proceed with. So based on what we know so far, you see a buy or a sell price, you agree upon the price and you execute the trade. But there must be accuracy also, don't you agree? It's like ordering food from a menu and you expect it to be delivered to you as the food on the menu. Of course, in the end, you never get what you see in the photo, however, it's slightly better than what you would prepare. And of course, no matter how much you will complain, eventually you will eat it. The broker must deliver what it says. Now, of course, in the forex market, you should expect some small tiny differences, no doubt. In any case, transparency is the key. Forex brokers should provide clear disclosure to customers about how their orders are executed. There should be an order execution document. This document shows how the broker obtains the best, fair and true price for you. Some of the basic information should be how is the selected hedging party? What is the selected hedging party? How do they manage any potential conflict of interest? The process followed for selecting the price sources. The process for selecting and monitoring the technology used for executing customer's order. Also, as we said at the beginning of this episode, do not be afraid to contact your broker with direct questions like how they assure you about the forex execution quality how automated is the process what is the average spread do you get caught it fairly how fast is the execution there should be a percentage of slippage and is it possible to know it do your orders get executed successfully keep in mind that a reputable broker with a good customer support should be able to know the information. Brokers with transparent quality of order execution prove it and publicly disclose execution statistics. They regularly publish data reports on the broker website or you can request information like average execution speed, slippage percentage, average spreads, also important information like who are their liquidity providers, what volume do they choose in percentages, is there any conflict of interest like ownership or linked relationships relationships with other liquidity providers, even some common ownership. Is there any shady subsidiary company in the middle? How the brokers treat their customers? Nowadays, order execution are automated. In most cases, indeed, do not involve any human activity. But there might be some shady brokers that use market execution in their favor. Keep in mind that a small latency will have a huge impact on the final prices. This gives the broker the advantage to earn by using these small time delays in execution. Also, very important, as we said, to search for the average pair spread. Now, this might be different, of course. In peak hours, traditionally, spread is closing as supply and demand rises. The execution of the speed is also very important. You don't have to dive deeper, but since you are here, an order execution should be at less than the one-tenth of a second. Keep in mind that prices in the forex market are moving at an enormous rate. Now, of course, we are talking about ideal situations. I can guarantee that slippage in your trade is most likely unavoidable at some point. Entering price, closing price of a trade and so on. You need to understand that you are competing in the biggest market in the world or at least in a very good simulation. Under normal market conditions, by using a reputable broker, you won't have any slippage. For no reason, don't assume from what we said that a book broker is better than B book, C book and so on. It's important to know the core and how brokers think. The next time when you open an account with a broker, and you will get some typical questions like how long have you been trading? Do not hesitate to choose the maximum period and let's see if that works. Again, thank you very much for watching. Go back, repeat the chapters you are not sure and trade safe. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching our videos. I hope you enjoy. You know that we need your subscriptions, likes and comments for the YouTube algorithm. Help us to make more content and uh, trade safe.